Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope that you're as inspired as I am to be together for our first in-person convention in three years. Yeah. And one that is being streamed live across the globe. And although we've been able to stay together and continue our service projects during the pandemic, many of us have really missed the personal touch. And that personal touch is so important to everything we do. Now, to, to illustrate my point about personal engagement, I want to start by talking about some people who've mastered engagement in the virtual world. And I'm talking about video gamers. Video games have become an, an important way that young people connect. In one such game, it's, um, it's called Fortnite, gamers create their avatars to join teams and compete with 350 million players worldwide. And these avatars wear special virtual costumes. They're, they're called skins that they wear when they compete. Now, recently, Epic Games, the, the creator of Fortnite, wanted to join in the global effort to help the people of Ukraine in the face of the brutal, unprovoked war that Russia has unleashed on their country. So Epic Games pledged to donate all the money raised over a two-week period from the in-game purchases of skins to organizations that are assisting Ukrainian refugees in the region. Now, based on their typical in-game sales, they expected to raise somewhere between 15 to 20 million dollars. Now, you have to realize that the, that the average age of a Fortnite player is 19. 19. And those Fortnite players blew those projected numbers out of the water. And Epic Games ended up donating $155 million to the Ukraine. $155 million to the Ukraine relief efforts. That is an astonishing number. And it all came from young people wanting to belong to something more than just a video game community. They wanted to show that they cared about something that's happening right now. They wanted to align with something important, but they also wanted to make a difference. Now, when we were formulating our new Rotary Action Plan a few years ago, our research consistently found that young people are hungry for just these kinds of engaging, meaningful connections. But that same research also found a similar drive for people in, really, in every generation. We all want to connect, to belong, and to take collective action that makes a meaningful difference in the lives of others. And that's why our vision statement says, together, we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. So how does Rotary create that kind of lasting change? It's by taking action, by bringing our vision statement to life, and it's through meaningful, personal engagement. So, so I want to start with those, those last few words. How do we create lasting change within ourselves? Now, a UCLA professor named Matthew Lieberman wrote a book on this subject. And his research has found that meaningful interaction, which includes volunteering and, and donating to charity, improves personal well-being significantly more than getting financial rewards for your actions. In other words, doing good makes people feel good and fulfills a basic human need. What's more, Lieberman's research has also found that meaningful, engaged social interaction improves physical health, 
and longevity. And after, after everything that we've been through during the COVID-19 pandemic, can any of us doubt that we need to be together to greet old friends and make new ones and need to feel our time together is spent on something rewarding? That, that, that is why we are in Rotary and why engaged Rotary members keep coming back. But that's not enough. They also need to feel that the club they belong to is relevant and yes, and yes, fun. Now, for the first time in seven years, Rotary will gain net members this year. And this is, uh, and this is, this is good, this is good news. But now it's up to us to keep those members, including all of those new members we've brought in recently. Which, which kind of, which brings me to the, to the second call in our vision statement. Create lasting change in our communities. Unfortunately, the same actions that will lead to lasting change are the ones that will also help grow Rotary. And if we want to grow Rotary, it has to start in our clubs. Here's a, here's a great example. Three years ago, the Plano West Rotary Club in Texas had 20 members, and it did not reflect the community that it served. They had a median age of 67. Only five were women, and there was only one, one person of color. And although the club did have a reputation for service, it hadn't really positioned itself as a resource for community action. So the club members adapted, and they changed, and they changed their approach. They, they started with activities that, that may feel very familiar. They began to distribute after-school meals to public school children, forming close ties with teachers. They reached out to local police officers, and when the pandemic began, club members handed out materials about COVID-19 in underserved communities. But then, but then the club did something that was really relevant to their community. They started delivering meals directly to families in need during the pandemic, especially in the Douglas community. And because of this effort in a predominantly African-American and Latino neighborhood, people, people from across the community started showing up to help. And, and as a club, club drew African-American, Latino, and LGBTQ plus members, it also became younger. And today, and today, Plano West has more than tripled its size to 65 members. 65 members. Its median age, its median age is now 50, and the club now has 37 women and 28 men. And here's the best part, and its latest influx of new members is among young people. So, so when Rotary Clubs grow, when they grow, they have the power to transform communities. And, and that good does not go unnoticed. Helping communities thrive and making a noticeable impact with our projects also helps Rotary grow. And so, and so this brings me to the, to the part of the vision statement that we all know well, to create lasting change across the globe. We're on the brink of eradicating polio, and we will be the organization that stays on this mission until it's complete. We listen, we listen to community leaders and help meet their needs and leave behind resources that will make a difference for, for years and years to come. Our polio campaign directly assisted efforts to contain COVID-19. Our water and sanitation efforts for many years complemented our work on the environment and made for a very smooth transition when the environment became an area of focus. And when we turn our focus to empowering girls worldwide, 
we're building on years of efforts to improve educational attainment and health care for girls and to build local economies. This is what we do. We combine the global and the local. But we also, we also do something else that's, that's uniquely powerful. We never forget to add the personal. And it's that personal touch that allows us to have empathy for people suffering, to listen to and understand local needs. We, we, we hear news from around the world, and we connect that news with our own personal experiences and relationships. And right now, right now, we're seeing Rotary's personal commitment on act to take action on full display in Ukraine. When this brutal war began, we moved quickly to designate our disaster response fund as a vehicle for direct Ukraine relief donations. And thanks to the generosity of donors around the world, we've raised more than $15 million in contributions. $15 million in contributions that are already helping provide people with essential items such as water, food, shelter, medicine, and clothing. But that's, but that's only part of the story. Many organizations are raising money, but Rotary is unique because of our members in Ukraine. Ukraine has 62 Rotary clubs and six satellite clubs with over 1,100 members and 24 Rotaract clubs with more than 300 members. And through our connection to them and personal, and personal care for them, we're aware of and respond to immediate needs, whether it's providing meals or medical supplies, or even delivering a fire engine and an emergency medical vehicle. We listen and we respond. Rotarians and Rotaractors in Ukraine and, and really every Rotary member supporting them across the world are, are extraordinary. In fact, we have with us today a delegation of Rotary members from Ukraine. And, And again, even though, even though there are no flights out of Ukraine due to the war, they were able to make that long journey to be with us at this convention. So please, another round of applause for our delegation from Ukraine. <laughs> and you know, this, this is personal for me as well. In the 1940s, my parents, Lou and Natalie Huco, fled Ukraine as the Soviet army advanced across war-torn Europe. They landed in a displaced persons camp in southern Germany and then began a new life in the United States. And here they found a vehicle to give back to the country that welcomed them with, with open arms when my dad joined the Rotary Club of Clarkston, Michigan. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I worked in Ukraine. I worked in Ukraine during the early days of independence in the 1990s. And many of my relatives, friends, and former colleagues still live there. So, so when, I see, when I see all the Rotary members are doing in Ukraine today, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. The Rotary Club of Cherkasy purchased and delivered medical supplies and medicine to, to multiple local hospitals. Rotarians in Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Moldova, Romania, the Baltic states, and many other countries in the region have opened their arms, opened their arms to millions of refugees, mostly women and children. 
Some members of the Rotary Club of Kharkiv International have traveled to border countries to help refugees adapt to their new situations. And members of the Rotary Club of Lviv are unloading and organizing relief aid from European countries and then facilitating delivery to several humanitarian hubs across the country. And if you want, and if you want proof that this matters, that it is making an impact in one of the most horrific war zones the world has seen in recent memory, consider this. Rotary membership has actually increased, increased in Ukraine since the war began. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Think about that. These are people fighting for their lives. They're witnessing, they're witnessing entire cities being completely destroyed before their very eyes. Often people who've, who've never touched a weapon are being asked to defend their communities. And in the face of all of this, Ukrainians, having seen what Rotary has done to help in their time of need, have taken the extraordinary step of joining our organization. You know, it's been, it's been difficult to witness our fellow human beings, civilians, scrambling for their lives, leaving everything behind. And for what? And for what? But in the midst of this terror, destruction, and loss of life, we see, we see extraordinary acts of kindness, humanity, and dedication. The Fortnite players donating their allowance. The Rotary members opening up their homes to Ukrainian refugees. And all of our fellow Ukrainian Rotarians and Rotaractors still taking the time to hold meetings and to reach out to others to join them. And all of this gives, gives me, and I hope each one of you, great optimism for our future. Because, because if we can grow our impact, we will grow our organization. And if we grow Rotary, we will increase even more our reach and the good that we do. And if we have the courage to stand up for what we know is right, we can't, we can't help but bend the world a little closer to our vision of peace in ourselves and in our nations. And we can do that because these connections and this service isn't something we keep at a distance. It's personal for me, and I suspect that it's personal for you as well. Because together, we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you.